Well, hello. Uh, my name is Sister Honora Nalti, and I'm here with three other wonderful people who have generously agreed to work with us, Dominican Sisters of Amityville, uh, looking at the future uh, lives and mission of women religious. Uh, I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves, telling us who they are and why they minister where they minister. They can tell you about their ministry. And, um, and for fun, maybe just tell us a little bit about um, what's the first thing you're going to do once this sheltering in place is over. So yourself, why you minister where you are, and first thing you're going to do when the restrictions are listed. And anybody can go first. I'll go first. Um, so my name is Caitlin Tastian. Um, I started my journey in the Kincarism in college. Um, I graduated from Colwell University in uh, Colwell, New Jersey. From there, um, I became an associate with the Colwell Dominicans. Um, so I've been an associate for f uh, six or seven years now. Um, and then my path working through um, the Dominican youth movement and then working through the associates led me to now being the director of guidance and director of campus ministry and mission designee at Lacordaire Academy, which is a pre-K through 12 Dominican sponsored institution in Montclair, New Jersey. Um, so it's lovely that I get to kind of meld my personal love of the Dominican charism and connection with the sisters and, um, you know, being involved in all of that on a personal level with my job and my work and being able to transmit that and do all of those things with my students and the staff um, at Lacordaire Academy. So um, that's kind of my journey. Um, I, when I, when quarantine is over, I think the first thing I'm going to do is go to the beach. That's my safe space and not being able to really enjoy it the way I usually do this summer is, is riding on me. So, and I was supposed to go this year to uh, Fonjo for the second time, which was canceled. So um, I'm hoping that that will happen again, so. Great, thank you, Um My name is Brendan Collins Jordan. Um, I'm currently a PhD student at New York University working on a PhD in Latin American history. Um, and my research and my dissertation work really focuses on um, the history of religious congregations and religious organizations in Nicaragua um, and the way in which religious congregations work um, kind of interacts with development processes and with um, sort of grassroots political mobilizations and um, the way that sort of informs everything from the environment to um, economic outcomes and political processes. So that's kind of my professional work. And that's really um, how I've actually kind of come into a relationship with um, religious congregations, uh, which, you know, sort of began as a professional thing. And I think now is both sort of professional and personal. Um, you know, I've had really the pleasure of meeting with and talking with and getting to know a lot of people from a variety of religious congregations. Um, my research focuses more on the Marianal sisters, so I'm very familiar with that order and have talked with a lot of them. Um, but I've also sort of, because of this, um, ended up finding myself at Benincasa community, where I'm also a, a resident, um, which is sort of a, a lay community that's very influenced by and has a close relationship with the Dominican sisters um, and Dominican spirituality. Um, so that's sort of, I think, how I find myself here. Um, and as to what I'm going to do when shelter in place is finally lifted, I think um, probably go to the climbing gym. I'm a big rock climber, so that <laughs> I've been missing that a lot. Um, so probably that and maybe get brunch, which I also miss. <laughs> Great, thank you. And I am uh, Laura Orman. I live with Tenora. I am a member of our congregation for 22 years, and I'm on the Our Life Moving Forward Committee. Uh, I direct a small retreat house, Mount St. Mary House of Prayer, here in Watchung, New Jersey. 
And I think the first thing I want to do is go see family and friends and a big hug and go for pizza and spumoni ice is at my favorite place in Brooklyn. So <laughs> great. That's, that's what's waiting for, for me. And Nora, what are you doing when you, we, we get sprung? Oh, when, when we get sprung, <laughs> I'm going to go to the ocean also, Caitlin. Um, yeah. My safe place any time of the year. And I, I really miss the opportunity to see that. So that's what I'll do. So um, if we could, maybe we could just begin with a moment of prayer and then we will uh, move into the questions that we're going to ask you to respond to. Come Holy Spirit, fill us with your love and energy. Bless our conversation. Give us the courage to name and claim what we see, feel, hope for, and believe in. Gift us with open ears, minds, and hearts. We ask all this as always, with and through Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 So Brendan and Caitlin, what else are in addition to what you found on the emerging suggestion sheets? Uh, do you want us to know about how you think about all the ideas that had uh, come up or what may be missing? Um, so one of the things that kind of popped out to me was um, this question of community and like how to build and broaden the community. And I thought back to when I became an associate with the Caldwell Dominicans and um, in my process, now that I'm on the core team of the Colwell Associates, you know, helping others find their way to our community, which I'm sure is similar. The process is similar to the Avenueville Associates. Um, for us, the process tends to be very formal. Um, and I feel like going through those steps, while necessary to understand who we are and what the charism is, I feel like that kind of turns people off. And sometimes they you know, feel like if they have to jump through hoops to become a part of a community, well, is it worth it to do that? And then they don't get the full picture of like, what is at the end of that road? So sometimes I feel like that formality um, turns people away, but I also do feel that at, at a certain level, it's also necessary. And I also think like we need to work at combating the idea that you can't be part of the Dominican community unless you're a full-fledged sister. I feel like a lot of people have this idea that it's either all or nothing. You're either a sister vows, you know, fully committed in the community, part of the congregation, or you're an outsider. And I know as an associate and as a teacher and, you know, working with the Dominican community, there's a lot of space between sister and not part of the community, but I feel like that's not public knowledge. Um, so I think those are two kind of important points um, that came from the sheets for me. Um, yeah, I think what I'm going to say maybe sort of builds tangentially on that as well. But I think one of the one of the things that stood out to me as well, reading through and also watching some of the videos of pre some of the previous conversations, um, is the the idea of sort of using the the special relationship that women religious and the Dominican sisters in particular has to a kind of spiritual life. Um, that is both very nourishing and draws on the deep tradition of the Catholic Church, but also is maybe more open and more inclusive and more affirming than what is accessible in a lot of parish life. Um, and I think sort of kind of building on that, like I'm, I'm putting my historian hat on for a minute maybe, but um, one of the ways in which uh, religious congregations and particularly women religious in Central America sort of in the past 50 years have been extremely influential has been through providing communities, um, particularly communities that either have very weak parish life or have a sort of parish that's hostile to a lot of the individuals in the community. Um, one of the ways in which women religious have really, I, I think, brought a lot of um, really important gifts to those communities has been through kind of spiritual formation that is accessible at a lay level and that is sort of open and really uh, brings the best of 
it, in this case, it's the Marian old tradition, but I think this would apply to the Dominican sisters as well. The, the best of the tradition to a lay community and to a lay audience that allows them to really live out that spirituality and learn about that spirituality in a way that is sort of less formal and less um, off-putting than either a parish on the one hand or like, you know, it, in a way that doesn't make people feel like they're, they're in training to become fully vowed members or something, right? So one of the, the resources I'm thinking of specifically is um, the Marian All Sisters had various programs of spiritual formation that were focused on both kind of how do we think about the gospel and scripture in a way that really informs our own lives and kind of built a sort of pedagogy program for lay, lay people to engage with scripture in a way that's very informed by how sort of Mary and all sisters themselves approached um, reading scripture, but then also it was infused with practices of prayer and reflection and meditation and sort of um, centering that I think are informed by the, the sort of sensibilities of religious congregations um, in a way that really is unique within the Catholic Church. Um, and so I, I think finding ways to produce either um, institutes or workshops or sort of experiences that invite lay communities in to really access Dominican spirituality in a way that um, tries to actually interface with the, the sort of everyday experience that people have. I think like that is something that would be really beneficial for a lot of people. And I, I think speaking sort of myself as a young Catholic, I think um, a, lot of, a lot of us want um, the tradition of the Catholic church. We wanna feel sort of rooted in that history and in the long spiritual wisdom of the church but we want that to come in a form that's both inclusive and also flexible enough that we can really feel like we can live that spirituality in day-to-day -day life without having to sort of sacrifice some other integral part of our life. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. So how can we, the sisters, see through your eyes what you feel you need to live the gospel fully? So I kind of, when I read this question, I thought back to teaching my religion courses because essentially my, my goal as a religion teacher is to teach them about the gospel and how to live it. Like that's like my overall goal. That's what I want them to walk away with. Um, you know, and teaching in a Dominican institution, that's part of it. Like, so not only learning the gospel and how to live it, but how to live it in a Dominican way. Um, so I kind of went back to those, those roots and without a doubt, across the board and in the different schools that I've been in, students want to live out the basic tenets of Christianity. Students want to have that set of morals and values and they, they, they yearn for that. Um, and the students that I'm currently teaching in the Dominican institution are totally on board with the tenets of the Dominican charism, that they agree with, you know, what we believe in and and our view of the world and our view of the people in the world and our view of justice, um, especially in regard to the social activism piece. You know, my students, that's what they thrive on in their personal lives. So right there you have that, that ground, that common ground um, to meet these young people where they are and at a point that's important to them. Um, and I think where the disconnect is when they realize that the Dominican community and Christianity is within this larger microcosm of the church, that's where they put that wall up. They feel that as soon as they cross into that religious institution world, they're going to be judged or they're going to be talked at, or um, they're not going to be heard. Um, so they want to act and be active in preaching in the gospel. You know, I have students from, 11 years old all the way up to 18 years old preaching the gospel at our school masses. They love it, you know, but that's within our small Dominican community. In a, in a traditional church in their parish, they're not going to be able to go up on the pulpit and preach, you know, an 18 year old girl is not going to go up on the pulpit and preach the homily, you know, so I feel like within our little world, they're heard and listened to and feel 
as though they are actively preaching the gospel and living out the gospel. But then as soon as they go out into the wider community and the wider religious community, there's that disconnect. Um, so I think the message needs to be sent that these people, these young people, after they leave their Dominican high school or Dominican college or that safe space, they're still welcome within the Dominican community in other ways. That it doesn't just have to be go from, you know, Colwell University or St. Thomas Aquinas College and, or, you know, Dominican College and then into, you know, your parish. There are other ways to stay connected in that Dominican faith-based community where you can live out the gospel and still feel validated. Thank you. Um, I think thinking about this question, um, I think my response actually is very similar and I, I really would just echo a lot of what Caitlin said. Um, and maybe just add that sort of my, my own personal experience with um, Catholicism and with sort of coming to an appreciation of Christianity as an adult that, you know, I never, I hadn't really come to in my childhood um, has really been through my research and my engagement with um, religious communities. And so I think uh, that one of the, the, the just kind of, again, echoing what Caitlin said, but I think one of the, the sort of gifts that religious congregations can offer by providing a more inclusive space and uh, a space that is really welcoming and affirming to people from a variety of different backgrounds, to people of different genders, different sexual orientations, different um, races and ethnicities and cultural backgrounds, right? I think like that kind of alternative space within the church also is something that can allow people like myself who maybe didn't grow up um, having those kinds of religious spaces, but who really want a sort of deep religious tradition and spiritual practice and feel very drawn to Catholicism, but very ostracized by institutional structures. So I think like it's, it is both, as Caitlin said, something that I think could be of real benefit to people who've grown up within the church and within religious congregations orbit, and also something that I think would be of real benefit to people looking for a deeper faith life, but sort of nervous about approaching the church. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. So what else do we need to know about your perspective, your life, the world you grew up in, the world you live in now, um, that will give the Dominican Sisters of Amityville the freedom to work together with you from your worldview rather than from our own context? Um, for me, this... I right away thought about the different events that I've been to, whether it's in um, the Dominican, um, the Colwell Dominican community, or even the different events I've attended at Amityville or Bloisville um, or Spark Hill. I feel like a lot of times they're singular events that within those singular events have great one-on-one -on -one conversations and have great interactions or speakers or um you know, a, it is a wonderful display of what the Dominican community offers. But then sometimes I feel like those singular events, like that's it then. It's just that event and there's no follow through. Um, you know, so it might be a, an event on a college campus, you know, or an event in the high school, but then it needs to be that continual growth of that relationship. You know, you're not going to captivate people and have them fully invest in this community after a, you know, one hour seminar or, you know, a one day workshop, um, you know, which are great things to kind of get the ball rolling. But I feel like it needs to be kind of this continuous grooming of these relationships in order to get people fully ingrained in who we are and, and what we do. Um, and I think the college campuses and the sponsored institutions are a great way to start. You have the captive audience. They know what the Dominican charism is about. They, you know, they have the background knowledge. Uh, but then that needs to extend into the outside communities. How are you reaching them in other ways outside of just, you know, the school gymnasium? Um, and to me, thinking of, you know, young people and kind of the way of the world right now, and especially now in this virtual world that we're living in, um, to me, social media is key. That's the way we connect with our kids. Um, you know, they're all followers of our Lacquer Academy Facebook page. 
If I send out an email, they probably all ignore it. They're tired of seeing my emails. But if I put out a post on our social media, they all know what's happening. You know, so I think young people get their information from social media and that's how they communicate and that's how they learn, unfortunately. Um, but I think if the work of the sisters did have a presence on those platforms, whether it's each individual community, whether it's, you know, the, the more global, maybe Dominican youth movement community, you know, however, any of the different branches of, you know, our local Dominican teams, I think that would be a lot more accessible to younger people and that would spur that interest. That would encourage it, them to, you know, reach out or make it a talking point or follow up. And I think that could help grow those initial, you know, great conversations or workshops or preaching conference or, you know, all those initial events, I think could then help grow through social media platforms. Thanks. Brendan? Yeah, um, I think I would, I would really just draw an underline yeah. under everything Caitlin just said. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think uh, sort of thinking about digital presence and, and using technology, I, I know one of the previous talks someone had mentioned kind of finding ways to bring storytelling and, and kind of telling the story of the Dominican sisters and Dominican sisters own experience and maybe people who are laity but also have been involved with the sisters i think like bringing those kinds of stories onto a an online social media presence or an online venue that's openly accessible would be a very helpful way to sort of spread the word about what the dominican sisters are about to an audience who might not be as aware um and yeah i think also that is sort of that's the step one and then also as caitlin said like i i think a lot of young adults and young people in general really are looking for ways and places to, to sort of build community connections and build real relationships with people. And so finding kind of programs or ways to bring people in, you know, if whether their sort of entry point is um, universities and high schools or whether their entry point is, um, you know, social media or something like that, bringing people in then to face-to-face -face sort of interactions with Dominican sisters, events, workshops that um, that have a sort of longer term presence and really build a sense of community over a long period of time and, you know, provide a space where people know, like, when I go to this thing, I will see these people and I'll get to catch up with them, you know, so you really feel like you're building a relationship. Yeah. Um, and I guess maybe the one thing I would sort of add then, since this is just been the underline so far, um, is I also think one of the particular things Dominican sisters are very good at that I know other groups mentioned as well is um, environmental spirituality and sort of environmental engagement. And I think finding ways to open that spirituality up and interface with other kinds of environmental programs that people in the community are involved in and especially youth in the community are involved in. Um, and maybe finding ways that Dominican sisters can provide resources and forums for kind of bringing their spiritual gifts to um, other environmental work that's happening, I think would also be a really great way to dialogue with people, especially because young people, this is sort of one of the biggest things we're concerned with. Um, Great, thank you. And finally, to wrap up, which of the suggestions on the emerging suggestion sheet do you feel are the most critical to embrace right now? Um, I was drawn to the idea of the new forms of vocation. Um, again, I feel like there needs to be kind of development in that middle spectrum that, you know, you, you, you're not in a point in your life you're where you can commit to being a sister, um, but you do want some level of involvement. And I think if there were different um, you know, areas in there or those areas that are currently there were approached a little bit differently, that would inspire young people to become more involved in the community. You know, I found my way into the associate program and, and that's been a blessing in my life to be a part of that associate program. But like I said, that tends to sometimes be a very formal, um, a very formal process. Um, and there aren't, I can say, at least for the cold Dominicans, there aren't many young people taking on that process. Um, you know, so 
how do we adjust that process and that group? What do we add? What do we take away? What do we amend in order to make that more inclusive and more inviting? Um, I also was drawn to the idea of the social ministries, uh, the social justice and ministries need to be broadcasted, which we kind of touched on because I truly think that that's where, and like Brendan was saying, the environmental and ecological ministries, that's where the Caras and the Dominicans has common ground with young people. Young people are already engaged in these things on their own, whether it's through politics, whether it's through, you know, school groups or college groups or personal social groups. Um, but that's that basic common ground. That's where we can start. Um, you know, and if the, if the young people and people in the outside community know that we're already doing this, it's th those foundations are already there and then the relationship can grow. Um, and then the only other thing I was thinking was, um, I feel like if the Dominicans created, which they already have internally, a vibrant and welcoming place of worship where all people can come and feel included and can actively participate, I think that would be huge. Um, you know, we all know we walk into, you know, our parish on Sunday. Mo there are not many young people filling the pews. Well, there's no one filling the pews right now, but there, you know, there's, there's not many young people filling the pews. The young families aren't there. Um, from my end of it, we see the Catholic grammar schools closing um, all over the place. That's what's bringing young people to church. As those continue to close, we're losing even more people there. Um, and I feel like these young people are not just going to walk into a parish and feel ultimately accepted and feel like they can be involved on an active level. Um, so I think if the Dominicans, because they already have such a welcoming place where anyone can participate in the, in worship, if they open that up and broadcasted the idea that they are offering a place of worship where the words that are being preached are relevant to the lives of those in the congregation. No questions asked. You would have people that would jump all over that. Um, you know, I find myself, my family and I, you know, when we, we go to mass every Sunday, but you know, those important masses are, you know, our Easter mass and our Christmas mass. And though we want, we go to those masses at the Dominican mother house and at the Dominican convent in Colwell because that's where we feel the most connection. Um, you know, so, so it's, it's not that it's a competition between, you know, the parishes and, and the Dominican masses, but we feel like we get so much more when we attend mass with the sisters, because it's such a, it's such a vibrant and welcoming spiritual moment. Um, and for young people who are yearning for that, to know that that exists, I think would be a game changer. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I would echo a lot of similar things. I think um, for me, the, the thing that really stands out as very critical is, is um, programs and resources that help lay people access Dominican spirituality and Dominican um, traditions and the sort of depth of wisdom that the Dominican order has in a way that um, really translates that into the practice and the language of ladies' lives, of, you know, the lives of young people who um, are maybe either not affiliated at all with the Dominican sisters or who, you know, are not necessarily looking for formal affiliation but want some sort of depth of spirituality. I think having those resources and those um, those programs to really provide those spiritual gifts to a broader range of, of people would be really helpful. Um, and yeah, I think uh, the, the sort of point on having open, inclusive liturgical spaces that really invite people into a fuller participation in the church would be really critical and would be a really, really great blessing that um, the Dominican sisters could offer to a lot of people who feel like the parish space just isn't one that they can interface with or isn't one where they feel totally included. Um, so to have another space that feels like it could be more of a spiritual home, I think would be very important to a lot of people. Um, and then the last thing I would say is um, kind of on the point of social justice ministries, I think, or I, I think also um, 
in addition to kind of broadcasting all the great work Dominican sisters are doing, I think also trying to sort of forge partnerships with other organizations and other programs that maybe aren't necessarily in the Dominican sisters orbit, but are really important to the sort of local community. I think that is something that um, would really benefit a lot of people, both because then you guys are, are sort of amping other great work that's being done and you're getting the word out about the gifts you all can offer to a wider group of people. Great. So we thank you both for your time uh, with us, with Honora and I, and with our community, the, the committee. And uh, Honora and I would just like to um, extend the Dominican blessing upon the two of you. And so may God, creator, bless you. May God, redeemer, heal you. And may God, the Holy Spirit, fill you with light. Thanks again for, for your feedback. Thank you very much for having us.